So I will dive just straight into it. Uh, my name is Derek Kozell. I, I'm the GUNY Radio president. And the first thing I'll be talking about is, how did that happen? Uh, because the last time we were here in person, it was Ben Hilburn up here as GUNY Radio president. And the transition from him to myself is actually a very important one. And it's one that's going to have a lot of implications for the project, not because it's me as president, but because of the process. We announced it in GRCon 2019 and, uh, or sorry, 2020, and we really wanted to transfer from a benevolent dictator for life, you know, the standard open source model that a lot of projects have early on, to one where we wanted uh, much more accountability and we wanted much more responsiveness to the community. Ben was doing a great job, but uh, there should be, uh, it was also too much of a job for one person. So we wanted to distribute it out and we thought that was a great opportunity to do this. And so the method that we took has been described in past GRCon talks and uh, talks at FOSDEM. So do check those for the full details. But the, the long and short of it is that we formed an unincorporated association. We have a set of rules around how that's governed and that includes uh, regular elections. There was a general assembly formed, and this was the group of most active leads at the time of, of this association being created. And I do have that list on, I believe, the next slide. Uh, and since then, we've been voting in new members of the community to be on this general assembly. Uh, I, at one point, phrased this as a steering committee, and I think that's really the wrong approach here. This is kind of a centralized, general uh, situational awareness. The members of the GA represent many of the different areas of the GNU Radio project because we have a hugely diverse base of users, we have a hugely diverse base of contributors, and we have a lot of different areas where organizations and individuals are interested in, in using and interacting with the project. And for any one person, there just wasn't that awareness of all of these different areas. So what we're looking to do is have the General Assembly be representative of all of these different use case areas as much as possible, uh, and be able to inform and, and direct the project kind of as a, a centralized hive mind. Uh, however, it turns out that at some point, once a year, somebody needs to stand up on this stage and give a talk about the, about the organization and about the project. And so we put together a board, and this is three members, a, and currently it's myself, Mark Lichtman, and Martin Brown, uh, who are serving as the board, and the most recent election nominated us for the next two years. Uh, and it is our responsibility, yes, I chose the correct tense on the slide, it is our responsibility to implement the decisions and ideas of the General Assembly, and to act as the, the single points of contact when that is useful. With an open source project that is so community-based, it can be really challenging to do things like sign a contract, uh, send somebody to a specific event to give a keynote, or to represent the interests of GNU Radio in small working group sessions where there's an expectation that there is, ah, where there's an expectation that uh, your laptop goes to sleep. Uh, an expectation that there is somebody who has a, a nominal amount of authority to make statements on the behalf of the project. And so, again, this is what the, the board and the General Assembly are there for. Every member of the General Assembly, and there are several here, unfortunately not as many as we'd like, um, thanks to 2021. Uh, and so, uh, please do uh, reach out to any of us. I, I think uh, our information is on the next slide. But um, the articles of association, the information, our meeting minutes, for the board um, and our, our general meeting are all available online. We are learning how to do this. Uh, for many of us, this is our first time uh, in a formal structure like this for a, an open source project. And so we are looking also for, for feedback on this because in the end, this is going to be the group that um, helps uh, facilitate all of the actions of the project. We held our most recent election uh, and general uh, meeting on September 2nd. And the great thing is that there was a unanimous reaffirmment that the current board, the current articles of association, all of our structure that we chose last year actually was well-founded and has been uh, renewed. 
Yes, wonderful. So these are the members of the General Assembly. Uh, hopefully many of these names are familiar. If you're new to the project, then um, you will probably soon become familiar with many of these names. Uh, ones that I'd like to particularly uh, highlight though are is that as the G, uh, G <laughs> sorry, we're going to say the word GA probably quite a lot, and that's the General Assembly. So as the General Assembly uh, grew, uh, we've been able to bring on board Jeff Long, uh, Samantha, I, I, Johannes Demmel came on, I, and Jacob Gilbert I, as um, people who were more officially recognized for the roles that they were already doing within the community. I, and so they've been voted on by the GA and we're very, very, very pleased to have them on board. Uh, and this group will grow over time. That is the intention of it. And so as people uh, step forward with a desire to support the project above and beyond their own personal interests and their work interests, uh, we hope that this group grows. Uh, and so this is really the one of the big things for me of why this new structure is really important. GNU Radio in the past hasn't really had the structure in place to be able to apply for grants, to be able to make commitments uh, as a group towards uh, things that, that did need uh, outcomes delivered. You know, we, we've been very fortunate with maintainers uh, who have been very passionate, but in the end, they haven't been in a position where they could spend dedicated time pursuing focused outcomes. Uh, I thought I had my slides in a slightly different order, so this is a little bit of a jump, but um, we are going to be pursuing grants as the GNU Radio project, uh, and those should be coming in in the next year. And the main focuses of this initial set of grants are going to be around project sustainability. It turns out that particularly with COVID right now, uh, a lot of people have been very stressed, very strained. Uh, it's been difficult to put together this event and it's been difficult to, to maintain uh, the code of the project. The success over the last year is really in spite of those things. And it's taken a lot of, of sweat and tears from people. Uh, and so what we'd like to do is reach out to different sources of funding and actually start bringing on uh, at least part-time uh, contractors or even potentially uh, employees to do uh, project maintenance, sustaining engineering, uh, to recognize labor that's already done on a volunteer basis and try and at least financially compensate some of that, uh, to build up our non-code efforts that have been ongoing uh, things like event coordination. Uh, I have an entire section at the end of this for recognizing the organizers of the GNU Radio Conference, but this is something that takes a tremendous amount of time and effort to put together. And we really hope that uh, more and more of that can be done uh, in a more efficient way and in a, in a more uh, properly compensated way. Bringing on interns, there's a program called Outreachy, uh, which would allow us to pair up with qualified interns, and it costs $8,000. It's not all that much, but it's something that the project in the past hasn't been, been set up to uh, develop those sorts of relationships. And so with a formal structure, with more people uh, working on this, we're really excited that we hopefully will be able to bring on uh, interns more regularly. Tutorials, documentation, and guides. These are things that do happen uh, on a volunteer basis, and I do particularly want to shout out uh, to Barry Duggan, who has been doing a huge amount of work over the past couple of years. It turns out that he has never been to a GRCon. Uh, he's been fundamental to organizing this event, and unfortunately just wasn't able to join us this year. So I know that he's watching the live stream. Thank you. Uh, we'd also like to bring on you know, people to do more organized development of these, you know, longer, uh, you know, white paper level things, uh, you know, it could extend out to uh, college level entire courses that are made available. Um, these are the sorts of things that, again, just volunteers are not particularly well suited to do without support. Uh, the website development, uh, it is functional. You've all managed to find the conference website and hopefully the information that you needed, but we could definitely use some support there. And then further outreach, uh, this is something that we'll probably talk about more in the context of the SETI Institute, um, but we're hoping to do more things where we show up at more events, uh, where we're raising the awareness about the project 
and where we're engaging with communities that just previously haven't heard of GNU Radio or haven't had uh, interaction with us. The last two bits are really both should have question marks, but we're going to be applying for grants to try and more formally verify the performance of GNU Radio blocks, uh, to develop more tooling around that, increase the level of testing, so that applications that need that level of confidence uh, have to do less work themselves. This is something that it would benefit it if, the co if the project were able to bring this to the table. New feature development, that's really a big question. Being able to commit to new feature development really means having uh, some amount of onboard staff. You know, having the project be able to say, even if it's just contractors, we know that these people are available. If you want this feature, we can get the people on board to deliver this into the main core of the project. Uh, so that, don't expect that in the next year, but that's where I'd love to see the project getting to. In a bit of a smaller uh, perspective, we're currently looking for ideas for small grants. So please do check out this page on our wiki. These are things where, you know, would a thousand dollars go a long way in a certain area? 2,000, 3,000, you know, small amounts. And this is stuff that the GNU Radio project does actually currently have the funds to do at the moment. And the idea, we will be working on the process for approving this, but the General Assembly gives us a way of actually voting on spending this money. And that's the sort of accountability that we really needed and which was holding us back in past years from spending money on the project. Uh, so an example of where this has already been put into place is with training materials. And I'll be speaking more about this uh, on Thursday during the conference wrap up, but we are currently contracting to develop uh, training materials, which will be a common set of onboarding materials for getting radio. So if you wanna get started developing uh, with this software from scratch, you know, you may know Python, you may know C++, you may know a little bit of DSP, but trying to wrap all of that together and do a three-day course that could be delivered on-site or remotely directly by the project and by trainers that I, we essentially certify, I, that is our effort that's in progress and the General Assembly voted to spend $10,000 on that. So uh, more details will be around on Thursday but that's an example of the sort of thing that we're already starting to work on. Hmm. Well, we did update our code of uh, conduct. I thought that I had a little bit of a brief on it, uh, but update, we've updated our code of conduct uh, based on the same template, on the same original source material, but to version two. And this is just to keep it up to date with the reach and extent of the protections that we wanna to provide to our community. Our chat, this conference, everywhere that GNU Radio uh, as an organization and as a community uh, comes together, we want to make sure that people feel comfortable, safe, and that they have a, an avenue to get responses to any incidents that they see. We hope that these are very small. Uh, there have been a few in the past that have been reported and we were poorly equipped to respond to those in a timely and accountable manner. Uh, and so I'm very, very happy personally to say that we've formed a group of dedicated responders. We are looking for people to volunteer into this. Uh, so if you are interested in being one of the people who helps uh, respond to any of these reports, uh, and this is throughout the year, we only get one or two every year at the moment, and hopefully it stays that way or lower. Uh, but we are looking for volunteers. Uh, there's been a training attended from Otter Technology. This is a, a well-recognized provider of uh, diversity and inclusivity training. And we specifically looked into the uh, set of steps and uh, processes for being able to respond effectively. So this is an effect for this event. It's a new effect for our chat and everywhere else that the new radio community is. Uh, and if you have any incidences or even feedback that you'd like to provide, uh, conduct at gnuradio.org is the right place to reach out to. Or if you're here in person, you can reach out to any of the organizers. Um, that's primarily myself, uh, Sam in the back, uh, and then several other people. Uh, ben Hilburn would be another good person to reach out to, and they can uh, direct it out to the uh, group of responders. So. 
that's uh, most of the project update uh, in terms of the organization. Let's jump into more of the material. And as I got to this point, one of the things that I realized was everyone else is already going to cover this. There's talks on all of these topics. Uh, and so the signal metadata format, SIGMF, this is something that was hatched at a GNU Radio Hackfest uh, some time ago. Let me just check uh, how much I've run on. Thankfully, not that much. Uh, so the signal metadata format uh, was hatched at a Hackfest, published online under the GNU Radio uh, GitHub page, and has been slowly matured over the last couple of years. And one of the really pleasing things, and I'm sure it'll be said much more eloquently and in detail uh, in the talk on uh, Wednesday, is that the adoption of this has been really strong. We've seen a lot of government groups picking it up. We've seen a lot of uh, organizations and companies starting to use it. We've seen more and more open source projects beginning to support SIGMF as uh, a format that they're ingesting for uh, signal recordings. For those of you who aren't familiar with SIGMF, I should say this is an alternative to the raw IQ data file. Uh, we're all familiar with using the uh, file sync from GNU Radio to just dump IQ data or float data uh, out into a file. And how often have you ended up with folders full of this that are, are disorganized, lost? You come back to it a couple of weeks later and you say, what frequency was that on? What, what radio was I using? What's the sample rate? And then you realize you're, you're really up a creek without the sample rate. Uh, and so the signal metadata format is a standardization of the metadata formats uh, that were kind of already floating around. Took a look at those and said, okay, we're going to uh, write up a spec for this. And I, the uh, release 1.0 of that is imminent or already done, uh, but come on Wednesday to find out the, the latest status on that. I know there was a push to complete that for GRCon. There will also be a workshop on Thursday uh, all around the metadata format and the tooling around it. There are libraries, there are GNU Radio blocks. And one of the efforts that we'll be doing uh, this fall into the spring, however long it takes, is upstreaming G GR SIGMF into the core. So at the moment, and I will leave most of this to the uh, code talk tomorrow, but I believe that it looks likely that could be in 3.10 when that gets released, uh, possibly 3.11, but in the imminent future, SIGMF will be a native feature of GNU Radio. Volk uh, has been one of the long-term components of GNU Radio, the vector optimized library of kernels. In many ways, uh, there's not a lot to be said about the development. It's been proceeding very nicely. Uh, there's been new kernels added. There's been debugging done on it. There's been work on new platforms, and that's great. The huge news is that it's going to be relicensing uh, to LGPL v3 plus. And the big enabling bit of this is that it will be usable in applications where the source code is not released for, uh, for the parent pro uh, program. Volk is a library. It makes sense for it to be uh, able to be linked to from any application. And we think that this is something that's going to bring in more contributors to Volk, uh, help make Volk a healthier project and extend out to more platforms, more kernels. And we know that there are many people who are interested in using Volk in BSD applications uh, and in other uh, and in proprietary applications where they currently aren't able to. And so they're developing identical projects internally and not sharing out that work. So uh, Volk will be relicensing. This is in progress. It will be relicensed for the 3.0 release. And if you have contributed to Volk in the past, our huge request is that if you agree with this relicensing, uh, please do affirm that you are comfortable with this and you are okay with contributing your code under the LGPL uh, by going onto the GitHub repository and signing on to a document that's there. I, all of that process is described in a GREP, uh, a GNU Radio Enhancement Proposal that's available online. It's described on the Volk repository. If you have questions about this relicensing, please do come to myself or Ben Hilburn, and we can both talk you through uh, the implications of this. Uh, this is something that 
really probably would have made sense from the beginning, and we're really glad that we'll be getting around to this. Google Summer of Code. Uh, we've been really grateful and uh, happy to be accepted into this each year. Uh, this year, we had Oscar Elcom, uh, who worked on a view-only mode for GNU Radio Companion. Uh, he has a talk later on today at 2.15. Uh, but in short summary, it turns out that GNU Radio Companion, when you open up a flow graph, will execute any of the Python that's listed in the variable fields. Uh, this is a great and useful feature if you want to uh, have dynamic content there, if you want to be using Python functions to, for instance, create a file name with a date stamp, or you want to do a basic bit of math because it's so much easier to do math.py than try and remember the 10th digit of uh, tenth digit of pi. However, not all flow graphs uh, are from people that you know, and depending on your application space, it might be nice to be able to preview that in a format other than the raw JSON, uh, or sorry, uh, YAML of the um, flow graph. And so uh, view-only mode enables that. It'll show you a list of the dynamically calculated values, the formulas, and give you a chance to review that. So be sure to check out his talk for the actual implementational details there. The SETI Institute. Uh, this is also something that we announced two years ago at GRCon 2019. Uh, we have partnered with the SETI Institute. If you bought a ticket, uh, you will have noted and paid for it. You'll have noticed that uh, SETI Institute is now providing our back office support. And this is a huge assistance. Uh, so they've been handling all of our uh, finances, payments, transactions. And in many ways, that's been the smallest thing that they've done. Uh, they've also been providing support. So if you buy one of the GNU Radio t-shirts uh, that will be available tomorrow at the registration desk, uh, the design and printing and all of the logistics of that were managed by them. They've been handling uh, procurement of uh, projectors and equipment for the venue. They've been handling all of the contract signing uh, and negotiation and, and management there. So all of this support is something that uh, we're learning uh, more and more of how to work with them. This year is a little bit of an onboarding process for them, showing them what GRCon is, what our community is. Uh, we've gotten some great and interesting questions uh, as they've seen the, the talks go up and just asking, ah, so we knew that you did software-defined radio, we knew that you had these applications, but we didn't realize that anyone was using this uh, for underwater acoustic communications and stuff like that. I, and so definitely look forward next year. SETI Institute will have uh, much more of a prominent role in the organizing and uh, presence here at the event. And um, I believe that there's going to be a talk later today from Steve Kroc, which uh, may touch on some of this uh, in terms of our, our collaboration with the SETI Institute. We've been uh, working with them over the summer, uh, teaching uh, their summer groups, uh, summer research, undergraduate ex Summer experience, undergraduate research, research, undergraduate experience. Apologies, but I've forgotten the acronym, REU students. Uh, and so this has been 30, 40 students each year that we've been uh, running workshops for on Guinea Radio. And they've been going and developing projects. Uh, there'll be a talk on uh, Doppler detection in Guinea Radio uh, using SETI pipelines, uh, I believe later on in the week. I apologize, I've forgotten which day we've set that for. Uh, Daniel Estevez, who is probably a familiar name to, to many people here, uh, has been instrumental in running a lot of these workshops. And so a huge thanks to him for, for volunteering his time for that. There will be a workshop about the Allen Telescope Array on Wednesday. This is a world-class uh, distributed array of uh, six meter satellite dishes in Northern California, acting as a radio telescope receiver. Uh, and we had a Hackfest there in 2019, I believe. Uh, we hope that that Hackfest will return next year as in-person events become more feasible. Uh, but work has continued with that, and there'll be demonstrations during that workshop of uh, some of what's been accomplished with really high data rate processing and being able to, to ingest samples from uh, that many dishes. Our matrix chat service. And I realize this is a little bit of a shotgun uh, approach to, to uh, everything GNU Radio, uh, but we have been using Matrix for the past year and a half. Uh, last year's conference, the chat fell over, and we, we felt that quite strongly. Uh, and so we've taken measures over the last year to ensure that the chat is a bit more resilient. 
Uh, at times that's been bumpy. Uh, we know that the chat has gone down, that it's been a little difficult to use. Uh, there've been upgrades made, particularly in the last week, and we hope that the chat will be much more reliable. Uh, for those who are finding Matrix for the first time, uh, it is an open source and open standard uh, chat system. It's federated, so much like email, you can connect to the gnuradio.org home server, or you can be coming in from a Fedora one, or you can be coming in from uh, a corporate one. It turns out that uh, Matrix has been quite desirable amongst many government groups and many educational groups. And so we think that more and more uh, people will be bringing their own account accounts to events like this. Uh, the FOSDEM conference, the free and open source European developers meeting, uh, ran on uh, Matrix as well. Uh, it is private, uh, and so one of those uh, pieces is encryption, and the management of those encryption keys is one of those things that has been bumpy. So uh, apologies if during this most recent server upgrade uh, you lost access to some of your direct message chat history. Uh, there is a feature for backing up these keys, but I let's just say that the, the usability and user friendliness of it is something that uh, Matrix as an organization continues to, to work on. Uh, and that is at chat.gnuradio.org. So again, if you haven't joined the conference chat, please do. In terms of other events that have been running throughout the year, uh, this is something that is really great to see. The European GNU Radio Days ran for its third time. Uh, it's been an annual event and has been continually uh, maturing and evolving. Uh, and so it ran alongside the Software Defined uh, Radio Academy this year. Uh, the whole list of talks and presentations are up online, including some workshops and a capture the flag style challenge. Um, so I do encourage you to take a look at those. The workshops were uh, of outstanding quality. And um, they are looking at running it again next year. They have no confirmed details. And one of the things that they're looking for is how can they better serve the audience? They do run uh, in Europe, and so that may not be everyone here in this room, but hopefully it's many people who are in chat. Uh, should they focus more on workshops? Uh, how can they make it uh, more accessible to people? They've been running it on a weekday, and they're looking at switching it onto a weekend, possibly. And so they're looking for feedback on this. Uh, if you just search European Guinea Radio Days, you can find the contact info to reach out to those organizers. Other events, I've mentioned FOSDEM several times. Uh, there was the Free Software Radio Room run again last year, or this year still, in uh, February. It was an online event, and there was a very strong GNU Radio presence there, as well as a bunch of other uh, free and open source software-defined radio projects. Uh, all of the recordings from that are also available online, and FOSDEM will certainly run one way or another uh, again in February. The next one is one that is, is really quite sad. Uh, Tapper I uh, ran the Digital Communications Conference over the last several days, and if there'd been any justice in this year, they would have been co-located with us. Uh, they were planning to be here on the Friday and Saturday just before GRCon, and unfortunately, uh, their organization and I uh, chose to, to be purely virtual this year, and, and having organized this event, I can absolutely say that, that they have saved themselves a lot of trouble and strife and uh, stress. I'm very glad that we've been able to pull it off, but um, it has required an extraordinary amount of work. Uh, we're hoping to align with them again in the future. I, this is, for those who don't know, this is a very long running uh, open community, not necessarily open source, but uh, open community around software defined radio, digital communications, uh, and the development of, of new and interesting uh, digital communications methods and standards and technology, uh, mostly from an individual basis. So uh, it's a very interesting community. And if you look back to the early days, there were some very early GNU radio presentations shown at Tapper DCC before GRCon was uh, the event that it is today. So I do encourage people to take a look at that. I believe that the recordings will be up uh, for that and we hope that we'll be able to be in person with them in a future year. And that brings us to GRCon here. I, it's taken a, a team much larger than those just listed here to pull this off, but the people on this slide are absolutely the reason this event has occurred. 
um, between Sam, Barry, Josh, Steve, and myself. Uh, there have been meetings every week of the year since last GRCon. And uh, I think many people will have, have felt uh, throughout the year the, um, the challenges of trying to decide whether an in-person event is something that you would attend. And so for the people here in the room, thank you for making the decision to come. We hope that our policies and our decisions have, have make you, made you feel comfortable and safe. Uh, but for those who are joining us online, absolutely, we understand that, that this has been a year where a lot of people are not traveling for one reason or another. And we hope that you'll join us in the future when, when things have settled. Uh, but particularly these people have, have made this event possible. But there's definitely special thanks due as well. Uh, this conference venue was originally booked for 2020. Uh, we would have been having this event a year ago. And that event was organized by Michelle Thompson. Uh, she was our conference chair for several years leading up previous to that and ran tremendously successful GR cons. Uh, she passed onto this new organizing committee all of the contracts, the preparation, uh, the notes and relationships that had been built up with the local area. And absolutely, we took all of her work and, and just pressed play on it <laughs> in many ways. Uh, some of the details have changed. Some of uh, you know, the, the challenges have cropped up since she set this up. But I did want to particularly uh, say thank you because this event is, is really Michelle Thompson's uh, achievement. And so anything that's gone wrong, you can blame us as the current organizers. We implemented the plan, uh, but we, we inherited a very firm and solid plan. Uh, and that was uh, also facilitated by the Open Research Institute, uh, which she is one of the managers of. This is a uh, open source, open community research in, uh, group dedicated to evolving digital communications uh, and other open science efforts. The SETI Institute, I, and again, not enough names are on this slide. There are absolutely people who should be who are not, um, but the SETI Institute has been tremendously supportive and um, we're, we're tremendously grateful to them for, for helping us through this. Uh, GNU Radio, as I said, is an unincorporated association, and so uh, there's no one to sign on the dotted line. And, and the SETI Institute has, has bravely stood by us as we, as we passed paperwork to them. And um, we're looking forward to all the collaboration that, that comes from that uh, in the future. And that's the end of my presentation here. There's so much good content in the rest of the week, I didn't want to put in too many spoilers, and I did want to hopefully leave some time for questions. Uh, if you have any questions about the project from soup to nuts, I may not be the person to answer, but I certainly hope that I can direct you to the person who does know. So in summary, thank you very, very much for being here. Thank you for participating. Uh, and we're going to have a great year. It's been a challenge to organize. It's been a challenge to get together. But speaking with everybody just over the past couple of hours and last night, there's a deep sense that as this is a community event run for the community, by the community, uh, it's wonderful to see so many familiar faces. It's great to meet new people. Uh, it's great to see faces that we've seen online and never met in person. Uh, and so we know that this event is going to be uh, you know, that core focus that it is every year around community radio development and about building the relationships that make an open source project possible. So thank you very much for coming out. And uh, we'll have many more announcements throughout the week, I'm sure. I, there's uh, quite a bit that isn't yet set up. And so I want to, to hold off on recognizing some of our supporters who, who definitely deserve it uh, until we're able to do that full justice. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand. We have a microphone that can float around. Uh, to those who were getting the captions online, there were quite a few inaudible questions. So uh, please do wait for the microphone to reach you. And if I've stunned everyone into silence, uh, that's probably only due to how fun the uh, NASCAR talk was and uh, how boring business management sometimes can be. Uh, the other thing that we are going to be working on is uh, pulling questions from chat. Uh, 
I don't know if anyone's on the conference chat right now, but if you do see questions, if you could raise your hand um, and highlight it, we'll, we'll definitely give a, uh, get you in line. Okay. So uh, there's lots of sponsors this year. There are many sponsors this year, uh, and they are the people who I was saying that uh, I didn't, I was inadequately prepared to properly recognize um, because this event couldn't be happening without the sponsors. And so me standing up here and just trying to name all of the, I believe, 19 sponsors this year from memory, higher than 19, I'm, I'm getting a, an upward arrow, uh, 22, 22 sponsors. Uh, you can tell that uh, I am inadequately prepared for this. And I, I want to apologize to the sponsors for that and hope that the, the success of this event can be a little bit of a, a compensation for that. I, the best I can do at this moment is to, is to reiterate the list that hopefully you all received in an email to say that I, there will be an exhibit, exhibit hall opening tomorrow across uh, where you will be getting lunch and to say that I, these organizations that have stepped in this year have, you know, not single-handedly, but collectively uh, made this project possible to get through what has been a challenging two years. The finances of this conference uh, are, are tenuous at the moment. Our attendance is certainly lower than we expected. And it's the confidence, faith, and, and investment that all of these sponsor organizations have made that will make it possible for us to organize next year's event. I, it takes a lot of money to do it. It takes a lot of time and effort. And, and without the sponsors, it would not be possible. I, to simply say that they're supporting the conference is also inadequate uh, because many of, the pe many of the organizations that are here are not just putting money on the table. That is appreciated, but they're also putting their time, effort, code, contributions uh, also on the table and feeding into the open source nature of the project and supporting it, whether that's through developing hardware that GNU Radio uh, receives and sends data with, whether that's developing software and services and applications based on top of GNU Radio, uh, whether that's uh, just being a, a, a user of GNU Radio uh, and in, for internal testing, for internal development, and choosing to reinvest into the project as a supporter. Those are all, all huge. Sounds like we have a, a, either a question or I've gone over time. <laughs> um, question from online. Is there a particular area of document, documentation in which help is desired? Documentation is a tremendously challenging area because each person who comes to the documentation page is usually looking for something slightly different. Uh, I believe that we have very reasonable documentation at this point for starting to use GNU Radio once you have it installed. Uh, but the install process for GNU Radio remains quite difficult. I'm very grateful that some of the next talks that come up, I believe the two following talks, uh, are about packaging GNU Radio and making it easier uh, to use in different operating systems in different environments. Uh, but the pages around there, around getting started, definitely need uh, continuous review and, and improvement and simplification. It's great that there are 40 different ways to install GNU Radio. If you are a new user, you shouldn't care about 39 of them. Uh, additionally, I'd say the other area that could use improvement is I guides on development environments. If you are installing an out-of-tree module or you are developing an out-of-tree module, uh, it would be nice to have the soup to nuts answer of how do you fire up Visual Studio Code on Windows and get GNU Radio uh, running in a development environment. A binary installer is only so useful in that case. So in, in what is an inadequate acknowledgement of our sponsors, uh, please do visit this page because it is not a, a trite, small list of people who are, are supporting the project. This is, in many ways, uh, the, the reason that we are all here, uh, is that they have chosen to support us and that there are uh, organizations that are in this room, that are online, that are simply not present as part of this conference who are saying, over the course of the year, GNU Radio brings us value, uh, and we want to recognize that. And so all of these companies are ones who um, have stepped up to the table there and are, are making this possible. Okay, Sam. I, I have another online question. 
Um, being an open source project, is there a cost breakdown for the conference itself? I, well, there's, there's certainly a cost to running it. Um, we're very glad that we're able to make the live stream freely available on YouTube. Um, in terms of like a GNU Radio annual budget, if that's, if that's part of the question, I, we have been putting that together and we will have more comprehensive financial reports after this event. That's one of the things that we want GA to make transparent. Um, I should probably finish the rest of the comment. I apologize. Uh, it's, pricing is a little high for a hobbyist. It may help make the decision to attend in person. I can never, never afford the expense on top of the conference fee. So they appreciate the virtual attendance, but. We, we will, can, and this is a commitment that we have. We will continue live streaming. We will continue posting the videos freely available on the internet. Uh, we will work year on year of making the workshops more and more available. This will be our first year running hybrid uh, and it's full of challenges. And so uh, we hope that we succeed at all of them, but certainly year on year we'll, we'll be making it more and more available because absolutely is an expensive event to attend. I, if you buy an early bird ticket, the conference does not make any money. They, the per attendee cost is higher than that. And so we are doing our best as far as that comes. And this conference, particularly this year, is not a fundraiser. Uh, in normal years, it's our goal to be able to fund our usual uh, annual expenses. Uh, and that's everything from continuous integration to uh, you know even mundane things like website hosting, web development. Um, being able to occasionally, and this isn't something we've actually done recently, but buy hardware where things like uh, the Mac M1 platform has been unsupported for some time, and where we may need to invest in buying some of that equipment for developers. Uh, our chat server is is a non-trivial expense, uh, not compared to this conference, but um, in terms of our annual budget. So we do have expenses, and and we will try and make it as accessible as possible. Any other questions in the room? Okay. Uh, with that, I think we can probably take our break a little bit early. Great. Thank you very much. And there will be many more announcements throughout the week and many more uh, opportunities to share good news. Uh, we have lots of good talks, workshops, and um, you'll be finding out so much more about the project there.